the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord and welcome to summer praise service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We are honored. We are honored to be back tonight and ready for another round. Listen, it's been hot outside today, but it's about to get even hotter in here tonight. Anybody ready for summer praise? Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! We give God glory. We give God honor. Amen. We give honor to all the people who are here in the sanctuary with us tonight. Those that are coming in right now on Facebook. God bless you. Share with somebody. Let somebody know we're on. We're on. And the word of the Lord is getting ready to come forth. Amen. I tell you, I feel it in the atmosphere. God is going to say something special to you and me on tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm getting ready to pray. And then our praise team is going to come. And then we'll have a time of giving. And then the man of God, Minister Matthews, is going to come back tonight and preach the word of the Lord. I'm still excited about what he preached last Tuesday night. And I just know that God's going to use him again tonight to be a blessing to those who are listening and watching. Come on, we're praying right now. Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and we give you glory. We give you honor, God. We give you praise. Father, we, we give you thanks. Thank you for another day. Didn't have to do it. You didn't have to keep us, but you did. And for that, God, we are thankful. We're grateful. Thank you, God, for everyone that's here tonight, everyone that's on Facebook with us tonight. And we pray, God, your anointing and your power to set the captive free. Go forth from this pulpit tonight. And we, we thank you in advance for what's going to happen in this place at this hour. In Jesus' name, it shall be so. Healing and deliverance and salvation and the reclaiming of the lost taking place tonight. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. The praise team is coming. It's been a long, hot day, but as Bishop said, it's going to get hotter in here. I hope y'all ready. Y'all come on and put your hands together. about a change God is bringing about a change in me I know he is bringing about a change God is bringing about a change let me say God God is bringing about a change my God my God, God. is bringing about a change oh yeah God is bringing about a change Bring him out a change. God is a change. Bring about a change. God is bringing about a change. He's 
bringing about a change. He's bringing about a change. I can feel it move. Yes, I can. There's been a change. All over me. There's been a change. I can feel it all over. Me. I don't do me. 
glad he changed. I'm so glad he changed. I'm so glad he changed. I'm so glad he changed. He changed. Said he changed me. 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 I know I've been changed. 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 He changed me. He changed me.
excited about the check. Oh, my, my, my. My, 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 my. It feels good to change. I don't know about nobody else. It feels good. Feel good, right? I'm so glad all right, it just felt good, I'm sorry. Leave, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. But like that, but I'm not. You got to work on me. Work on me. <laughs> Giving all glory, honor to God, who is head of my life. I just want to give honor to uh, my bishop and my pastor who is here. Come on, let's give them a hand. All the church leaders, ministers, elders, deacons in the room. I thank you and I appreciate you. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be before you long. I'm going to jump right in. This is part two. Part two of what's in your bed. Just to do a little recap. Last Tuesday, I came from John 5, 1 through 9. It was the story about the man by the troubled water this pool called Bethesda down in Jerusalem, Bethesda. During this story, this man, he couldn't get down to the pool. Jesus came, he saw him. Jesus asked, do you want to be healed? The man gave an excuse and said, every time I try to get down there, I just can't seem to do it. And Jesus gave him the instruction to pick up your bed and walk. Say it with me, pick up your bed and walk. All right, so with that being said, we came to the conclusion last time that we must clear our mats and we pick up our beds and walk. Clear your mats, meaning sometimes you gotta clean that stuff off your bed. It's weighing your mat down. It's weighing down your mattress. Clear that stuff off. Pick up your bed and walk. But I did want to point out, pinpoint a few areas that can help lighten the weight of your bed. It can help lighten 
the load. There's two things I want to go over. The first one tonight is we have got to focus on cleaning our bed and stop focusing on somebody else's bed. Tell tap your neighbor and say, stay off my bed. Get off my bed. Stay off. Get off my bed. Stop looking at my bed. Stay off my bed. When, you, when your focus is not on your own soul, you run the risk of being distracted. Now, with looking at someone else's stuff and looking at somebody else's mat, our human mind will naturally try to compare and contrast. Compare and contrast, okay, so, let, so what, it, what that means is someone that's, that's, do, that's going through the compare and contrast in their mind when looking at somebody else's man might say some things like this. I know I may drink a little bit, but I ain't cheating on my wife. Some, somebody else might say, I know I might smoke Newport 100 menthols in a box, but I ain't sleeping around. Now see, in our mind, what, what we do is we look at the next man's struggle, judge it, only to justify our own trash, our own insecurities, our own hurts, our own traumas, and then we have the audacity to say, that's just the way I am. Tell somebody to stop looking at my bed. As a result, you lost sight, you lose sight of your bed, and you become complacent as the victim and never the victor. See, what happens is you lose your chance to level up with just one glance. Stay off my bed. Stop looking over here. What's over here might not be for you. Only I might can carry this thing. Don't think that, my st that your stuff is not as bad as my stuff and my stuff is worse and my stuff ain't as bad as, sister, as, as Minister Brookie. I can't compare and contrast because here's the thing. We all have fallen short of God's glory. We all have. We all have. We all have. Now, this is just the second point here. I told you that was the first point. Looking at somebody else's stuff. Now, what to now make picking up your bed even harder is when you're trying to pick up your mat with the spirit of offense. I mean, I, the, the ones I wanted to say, hey, man, got quiet on me. Everybody else did. Now, I had to really do some soul searching because I had to look into me before I said this thing right here, being offended, because I was A1 captain of the offended team in my own eyes. I said this part because I had to take talk about offense. Now, after I checked myself, and fa I found it easier to do the things of God. After I checked my own offense, I found it easier to obey. Since, uh, since when did we become a people so offended that we fall into disobedience? We're so offended, we can't do anything. You can't tell us nothing. We, you, can't, you can't chastise us in love. You know, we're so prone to being the victim. Nobody can correct you. Nobody can tell you nothing. Nobody can laugh around you because you're mad. Somebody left you. Somebody hurt you. The pastor this, the pastor that. Bishop didn't stop being offended and heal. Stop being offended and heal. It's causing you to be disobedient. If I can talk about myself for a moment. You know, I always give you a Vilton story. There was a situation, I was in another ministry, we're not gonna name names, but we're gonna call this growth. I was at, a, I was at another ministry, and it was a situation where I was told that what I paid in tithes wasn't my honest tithes. I had a short week, my check was $200, and I gave 20, that's 10%. Look to your neighbor and say 10%. I did that, but check this out. I was told that God said that that wasn't my right ties. This person also went on to give me a false prophecy. And from that moment, I was so hurt because I believed that when people said, well, God said that it was just, uh, that was the end all be all, but not everybody proclaiming Christ and calling Christ's name is of Christ. Amen. 
That's what I had to learn. It caused me not to pay my tithes even till this present moment. It wasn't until two Sundays ago I started really praying, God, bless my hands with money so I can give the way I want to give. God, give it to me. I want to do it. If you give it to me, I promise I'll pay it because it's better to just be obedient. See, what's happened is I'm wondering why I have so much. Like, I'm talking about me. I'm not making it about me. This is the only example I got, though. If, I want, if I'm praying for increase, but I don't want to pay my tithes, what do you think I'm going to get? I said I had to go over this thing myself because that's something I had to learn. How do you want how do you want healing but you ain't doing you ain't helping heal nobody else? I'm not talking about the prayer line. I'm just talking about smiling, being happy, let's say in hello. Let's I'll shake your hand. I'll give you a hug. Be nice to somebody. Oh, the saints is so mean. It's okay. But see, if the church was perfect, you wouldn't have church hurt. If it was a, if, if it was perfect, we wouldn't have church hurt, but because the body of Christ is made up of people like us. Oh, y'all don't know who y'all are. We are the imperfect, but we're saved by grace. But we're still people. We still mess up. Uh, okay. We are prone to be offended, but God ain't called no coward soldiers. It is time out for the offense. It's time out to stop all it's time to stop all this weak mess. Well, we've become weakened, and that's why Satan has been able to come in and do the things that he's been doing in our lives, in our in our brothers' lives, in our sisters' lives, in our family lives, because we are we have become the coward soldier. Now, if you're not a coward soldier, now is the time to really stand up on your feet and tell God that you're ready to fight. It doesn't matter what. Okay, I have one that's not a coward. See, I'm not a coward. See, when I was a coward, I was still in sin. I didn't want nobody to see my mess. I didn't want nobody to see me with the new port or the coke in between this part right here that I was. No one, I didn't want nobody to see that. But see, if I was bold in doing it then and out there, I can certainly be bold now. We claim, we claim the power, but let's exercise this power. And, it, and when we exercise this power, we do it with what, people? We do it with authority. Say authority. That's what you have. You have authority over the enemy. You have authority over your own offense. You have authority over your sickness, over your hurt. You, it starts with you. But see, there's a thing called self-examination. Don't, don't too many people make it through self-examination because when you self-examine yourself, you see things that you didn't think you had to deal with. Things you thought you put away. I had to re-forgive my father. I had to do some things. I had to re-forgive some people. I had to go and get some things right. I had to apologize and be humble and come in love. When I came in hate, I had to shut my mouth when I talked about self-examination. Two things I'm going to recap and I'm going to take my seat because I feel it taking a different place. Two things. The first one was not focusing on the next person and their struggle. Don't do it. When you compare, you'll think that theirs, theirs is worse than yours, and it gives you the free will to keep doing what you're doing. But God hates all sin, not just the ones they want to put in the media, all of them. Amen. Now, the second thing was we cannot move our mat with the spirit of offense. Be teachable. Be able to. God, God tested. God tested uh, this for me this week. It was something so small, and all I had to do was say, okay, you won't get that issue out of me again. Pass. Without, without, without any back and forth, without any explanation, no questions after. I like to ask questions. None of that after. You know what? Okay. 
Now watch God do something big for just that simple act. You'll be surprised that just your okay and being humble will get you in more places and more arenas and more opportunity. Y'all don't want to go nowhere. It's okay. I'm getting ready to take my seat. I appreciate every last one of you. Everybody standing to your feet in obedience. Let's give God a praise. Let's give God a praise in this house. Oh, that was fine if it was just for me, but let's Shabbat the Lord. My God, thank you, Bishop. Come on, don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the exaltation from the man of God on tonight. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer. I believe after a good word is preached, it's perfect timing to go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. What is it that you need from God on tonight? Amen. I'm going to ask Minister Bowie if he would come and prepare to pray. If anybody in the sanctuary want to come, to the altar tonight. You can come and stand on the altar. Believe God. Hallelujah. And you know, you know, one of the things that I I I I I, I know me in my life. And see, as Minister Matthews were preaching, my bed often becomes my catch-all. Oh, no. ain't, ain't, ain't nobody. Huh? Sometimes when I look at the foot of my bed, oh, Lord. The pants that I wore three days ago. <laughs> the hat that I wore yesterday. The sweatshirt that I just put on and take off when I get a little silly, the jacket that I wore, maybe even the suit that I wore Sunday. <laughs> the bed becomes the catch-all. And every now and then, I get so frustrated with it, God say, clean it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, glory. If them pants are dirty, put them in the hamper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I wish I had yes, some help sir. in here. Hang your head up where it's supposed to go. Our beds become catch-all. Oh, my. What's in your bed? That it's time for you to clean it up. Clean it up. Oh, my God. Come on, man of God. He's coming. We're getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for that word tonight. And it's so important about cleaning off your beds. Yeah, yeah. God wants to, he desires to take us to another level in everything. And I learned something also, too, just before I pray. Don't let people try to keep you on that bed. Because some people see elevation in your life coming and transitioning. But what they'll do out of jealousy and envy like he was, you was talking, they'll begin to talk you to where you, they want you to be lazy and stay in that bed. But the devil is a lie. God said, whom I have in my hand, no man can pluck them out. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. We belong to God. We are his children. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you, humble as we know how. In the name of Jesus Christ. No other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we thank you just for your glory, for your yes, power, yes, for your yes. anointing. 
We thank you for the man that brought the message to yes. me, Lord. And God, as we continue praying for him, as you continue using him, not just here, but in other areas out there, Lord. For we realize that the harvest is plenty, yeah. but the laborers are few. Hallelujah. But he came before boldly again, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for that, Lord, because yeah. it made me take a look on some things. God, we thank you for every heart in this building, God. Some of us are wrestling with bad so much till it begin to be a headache. But this day, in the name of Jesus, we're going to change our heart and mind and begin to speak and pick up our bed and walk by faith in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Those that are watching, begin to speak to yourself. Say, self, I'm going to do better in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to stay on this bed of affliction anymore. I'm going to get up and be about my father's business. Hey, glory. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. God, we glorify your name tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For it's no goodness of our own, but it was all about you. You took it all to the cross. Hallelujah. Everything. And when it was done, you said, finished. And we thank you, Lord. Now, Father, we ask you to continue blessing the shepherds of this house, Lord, as they continue doing this every Tuesday, God. We thank you that somebody's heart is being changed. Somebody's mind is saying, you know, I need to take another look at myself. In the name of Jesus, we pray for them, Lord. The sickness, it's got to go. You confirmed it when you said, by your stripes, we are healed. Now, Father, we pray that they'll gain that knowledge to recognize by faith that they are healed. In the name of Jesus. And God, we pray many have petitions for everything, but God, we know that you are on time, God, all the time. And Father, we pray for this house as it continue going higher and higher in you, Lord. And Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise. All the way, from the usher all the way to the pool pit. Thank you for just the, the anointing, the, the love, the passion, everything that you've placed right here. God, we pray for this nation. We pray for this city. Every neighborhood. God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Let them begin to cry out to you. Yeah, Lord. Stop yeah, sitting yeah. there saying, what if? And start saying, I'm about, I'm going to do. Hallelujah. Get off the bed of do nothing. Woo. Start doing some things. Start praying. Start speaking some things into the, in the atmosphere. And God, we give you honor, honor, glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, glory, Thank glory, you, Jesus. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to thank you for joining us for another summer praise service tonight. What a, what a power-packed hour of worship that we've had on tonight. And we thank God for all of you. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your prayers. This ministry appreciates your support. Amen. And we want to invite you to join us for a special Father's Day. This coming Sunday, a special Father's Day service. Amen. Our deacons are going to be bringing the word of God. Amen. Deacon Hunter, Deacon Hedden, and Deacon Branch. My God, hallelujah, and we know it's going to be special, amen, it is going to be special, 1030 a.m. Sunday morning, we invite you to join us in the sanctuary, but if you can't get here, make sure you get in on the line and be there to be blessed by the anointing and the power of God. Amen. Thank you so much. We'll be back next Tuesday night.
Amen. Right here with another power pack summer praise service. Until next week, we love you, we love you, we love you. But God loves you even more. Good night, and God bless you. God bless you. We want to thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Even though you may not be here with us in the sanctuary, we thank you for your presence online. Now, remember this. We consider you a very important part of our church family. We are so excited that you decided to join us today. And I hope and pray that something was said or done that will bless you real good. We just want to take this opportunity to pray for you. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallelujah. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we come, God, thanking you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your favor. Thank you for how you've blessed us through this service. And God, we thank you for every viewer. God, we pray that you'll meet every need in their lives and that blessings will overflow unto them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Until bless next you. time, God bless you.